I just want to start this video with a moment of appreciation for the almost 1,000 of you who have been watching our videos and following along. Jared and I both want to say a big thank you. And with that, welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Open up real big today because we're serving up our first big byte. We'll be combining techniques from previous videos plus new features like component properties to build an app that lets us rate pizza toppings. We'll be covering a lot really quickly, so feel free to pause, rewind, and rewatch as needed if you're following along. Our app will have a menu, a card containing a single pizza topping with a trending icon, a title and description, and a footer with additional info about who else loves this topping, and at the bottom we have rating actions. Let's take care of our mise en place, or setting things up before we start cooking. To save a bit of time, we've pre-chopped some pieces that we'll use to make our app. Zooming in on our menu pieces, we can select the logo and hamburger menu icon. Pressing Shift A will combine these into a frame with auto layout applied. Let's rename that frame to menu. Next, we'll open the overflow menu in the auto layout panel on the right and change our spacing mode to space between so that our logo and menu stay on the edges. If you've used Flexbox in CSS, this should look familiar. Next, we're going to create components for our trending icons of up, down, and on fire. Select all three icons. Up in our top bar, click the component icon and select Create Multiple Components. Now we're going to bulk rename them by pressing Command R. In the Rename dialog, we're going to prepend icon forward slash before current name. There's a preview on the left. Make sure to check out our video about bulk renaming to learn more. Great. Now, to spice up this avatar with some component properties. First, press Command K to turn this into a component. Now let's create our first property. In the Properties section of the right panel, click the plus button and select Text so we can create a property that lets us change the initial. One thing we can do to make our layers easy to visually differentiate is to use emojis in the title. Let's use a writing emoji and the word initial. Make the default value J. This air icon has a tooltip that tells us our property isn't being used anywhere. To fix that, select the J, go to the content section of the right panel, click this arrow diamond icon, and select our initial property to make sure it's being used. Now, when we create instances of this component, we can easily change the initial from within the properties section in the right panel. Next up, we'll create our action bar components. Let's select these and create an auto layout frame. Do you remember that shortcut? Just like before, we'll go into our auto layout overflow menu and make sure our spacing mode is set to space between. Use this alignment grid to align things to the center and add some padding to the left and right of our frame. Onto our title and description. Select those, press Shift A to create an auto layout frame. Set their spacing to four pixels. Oops, we forgot to name some things. Let's clean that up real quick. Okay, that looks better. Now our footer. We have our text and we wanna pull in some avatars to represent other people who love a topping. To quickly make copies, use the shortcut click option drag for the first one and then press Command D to copy another one with the same distance. Adjust the colors of them a little bit to give some variety and we're almost good to go. We can use our text property to change up the initials. Let's firm up the layout. Select all three avatars and add auto layout. We can use a negative spacing value to overlap the avatars to create our stack. One thing we can do is go into our overflow menu and change the canvas stacking order between first on top and last on top. I like last on top for this design. With our avatar all cooked up, it's time to combine it with our text to create the footer. Select both, and once again, we'll use our buddy Shift A to create an auto layout frame. Change its spacing mode to space between, rename the layer to footer, and add a border on top. Add a stroke, and in the stroke sides popover, select top to apply a border just to the top. With our footer frame selected, we can adjust the padding below the border by changing this padding value to 8, 0, which is a shorthand that tells Figma to only apply padding to the top. We can check this by toggling independent paddings. The same shorthand works for left and right. Congratulations, mise en place is complete and it's time to get cooking. The first dish we're going to make is cards. Start by drawing a frame. Press F and draw a box. Let's change it to a wireframey gray value for now. Add border radius, which is at the top of the design panel. Draw a rectangle inside our frame to hold our image and give it a small border radius. Add auto layout to our frame by pressing the plus icon in the auto layout section of the design panel. Set the padding equally to 24 pixels. Now we'll make sure our image resizing is set to fill container in both directions. That lets us resize the rectangle and our image will fill the area. Next, we'll copy and paste our title and description into the card. 
change our auto layout direction so things flow as we want. Now copy and paste the footer and change its horizontal resizing to fill container. Let's go ahead and make our title and description fill the space too. Now we can resize our card and things respond how we want. Before we turn this into a component, let's add our trending icon. We'll put this icon down here to create our design. Surprise, press Shift A to add it to an auto layout frame. Change its alignment to center and add some padding to it. Add our gray background color, a border radius to make it fully round, and we'll cut and paste it into our card. Since our frame is set to auto layout, our icon wants to sit at the bottom of the frame. But we have this handy new absolute positioning feature that lets us put it where we want outside of the flow of the layout, just like in CSS. Click the absolute position icon in the upper right of the frame parameter section. Now we can move this around and place it where it looks best. Set its horizontal constraints to right. We have this tasty resizable card now. To reuse this design, we want to turn it into a component. Select the outermost frame and press Command K to turn it into a component. Give it the name Topping Card. By setting up component properties on our card, we can control pieces of it when we create instances of it. One thing we might want to do is hide or show the footer. Select the footer and go over to the layer section in the design panel. Click the arrow diamond icon to create a new component property. We'll rename it using an emoji to keep it short. Rename it to eye emoji in the word footer and keep the default value to true. Click create property. This will create a Boolean property that we can toggle. We may also want to show and hide the trending icon. Let's go through the same process to create a Boolean component property that will toggle the visibility of our trending icon frame. Another thing we want to be able to do is change this icon depending on how the topping is trending. Move over to the instance selection area in the design panel and click the instance property icon, the arrow diamond. Rename this using a diamond emoji plus the word icon and then click create property. This will let us easily swap icons from our properties panel when we create instances. Next, command click into our title to directly select it. Move over to the content section of the design panel and click the instance property icon. Rename it using a similar pattern as before and then create the property. We'll do this for our description and footer text too. Now we can quickly change text for each instance we end up creating. Take a look over at the properties section on the right. Notice all of the properties we just set up. We can go ahead and reorder these into whatever order makes the most sense for our design. One last thing we should handle is the ability to switch our card styles to maintain contrast on different background colors. Click the plus icon in the properties section and select variant. This will change our component and wrap it in a variant frame. Now let's duplicate our card and expand the frame to contain both. We can rename the default name of our variant to text color. Select the first variant and change the text color value to dark. Select the second card and we'll change the dark colors to white using selection colors, which is also covered in more detail in another video. Now we have a light variant and a dark variant. This is when properties aren't necessarily appropriate because we want to show smaller visual differences. We're not toggling visibility or changing instances or text. Let's pull down an instance with the click option drag shortcut to see how things are tasting. First thing I notice is that our property ordering isn't ideal. Oops, and I forgot to name the light variant of our card. Let's fix that real quick. Now we'll reorder our properties into logically ordered groups. Select the instance to see the outcome. I like to have display options first, followed by user editable properties. But you do you. For this instance, we'll mock it up as pineapple. In the properties section in the right panel, change the title, description, footer, and trending icon. Okay, our card component's working well. Now that we have our things in order, it's time to start mocking up the entire application. Notice how quickly we're able to do this because we spent time setting up the smaller pieces first. Here's our canvas over on the right. Copy and paste the menu into the canvas frame, which already has auto layout applied. Adjust the top and bottom padding to 20 pixels. Let's copy our action bar and paste it into the canvas. Let's grab our card instance and copy and paste that into our canvas as well. Change its order in the layout by pressing the up arrow with the card selected. Select the canvas frame and press enter to automatically select all the children containers within. Now we'll set their horizontal resizing to fill container so that things resize horizontally if we change the size of our frame. Select the card component and change its vertical resizing to fill container so that it grows to the height of different devices we might need to mock up. Let's test this out by resizing. Yes, everything's working like we want. The app still looks a little wireframey, so let's add some style to make it pop. We've stored some images over here to save us some time. Let's copy the chili by right-clicking on it, hovering over Copy Paste As, and selecting Copy Properties. 
The shortcut for that is Option Command C. Select our image area with a command click, right click, hover over Copy Paste As, and select Paste Properties, or the shortcut Option Command V. What that does is paste the image as a fill style. We do lose our original border radius, so let's adjust that real quick. Select the card and we'll adjust the background color by sampling from the image. Because we're on a dark background now, we need to adjust the text color property over in the design panel by selecting the light variant. Now we can adjust all of our other properties to represent the chili image. In this mockup, we'll remove the footer and change our trending icon to on fire. We've now made it really easy to mock up any scenario or state that we might need by combining many features and techniques. And that's how you make magical mockups in Figma. I hope this Figma byte wasn't too big to swallow and that it prepped you with pixel pushing property perfection. Thanks for watching.